Hey, this is Doug from Homes Now. I wanted to make a short update video with some updates on what Homes Now is working on and what is coming next. We wanted to thank all the volunteers who made it out to the last summit on Sunday, October 20th. We had a lot of volunteers show up and it really made the difference. Thanks Amy Glasser for helping with managing the donated goods and supplies that were donated. Thank you for driving forward with signing up volunteers. Thank you to all the volunteers who helped distribute the clothing and supplies as well. Thank you Marcus, D, and JC Mansfield for organizing and helping with the shower truck. Thank you JC for getting our volunteer list and contacting our new volunteers. We wanted to thank all the volunteers who have worked with Homes Now, new volunteers, and those who have been with us from the start. We have multiple passionate volunteers and we appreciate their support. But also keep in mind that if you are a volunteer, that Homes Now is a legal and official nonprofit, but we do not operate the same as other nonprofits. We are made up of 100% volunteers. None of us get paid. Sometimes it's easy to fall into a pattern where volunteering feels like a job with no pay. We don't want anybody to feel that way, and that's why we have as, we have as much as possible have had the policy of decentralization so that the load of doing everything is distributed between more people so that if one person can't volunteer, there's more than enough to share the load. We want volunteering to be fun and interesting. If you like to volunteer with Homes Now, we have an application on our website. Also, if you don't want to fill out our application form, just show up at any of our events. Also a tab on our website, uh, which is homesnow.org. Thank you um, to all the volunteers who have helped so far. We wouldn't be as far as we are without you. Um, but please never feel obligated to help Homes Now if there's a scheduling conflict or you just want to take a break for a while. It's okay, nobody is indispensable, even Jim and myself. The leadership of Homes Now wants to operate the organization in a decentralized fashion in which people pick up the work they want to do, but not have to feel obligated to do it if they don't feel like it. If you think that you can do something and you want to contribute, just do it. You don't need permission or hand-holding from us. Use your best judgment and call. But if, some, but if there's something that we need to change or adapt to, then we'll do so. Jim and I have had a vision for Homes Now of providing housing for those who need it most. That is the primary goal. All other stuff, such as the summits, the shower truck, the sleep out, and everything else are secondary goals. The reason why these secondary goals have been done first rather than second is because we have not been able to secure land to build tiny homes. And we don't just want to sit on our hands. By accomplishing these secondary goals and remaining consistent, we show that we are serious and that we can handle larger goals in a professional manner in order to quickly and efficiently help homeless individuals. This isn't about Jim, this isn't about me, this is about helping those who need it most. Some announcements about the office. Homes Now was considering closing our office on DuPont Street in order to save money on monthly expenses. This is because we are committed to keeping our admin costs for this nonprofit at 5% of total operations, and we want all the money to go toward helping homeless individuals directly. None of us get paid. We are all volunteers. Office space, however, does count as admin costs on a, you know, not, not a tax return, but the equivalent of a tax return for a nonprofit. Um, but luckily, we were able to keep the office open, um, thanks to Charlie Stores for helping us with paying for the rent for our office space for you know the next few months or longer if he wants to, but if not, no worries. Also, it seems that the office is moving to a new location on the waterfront. It's the same owners, but we'll have more information on, on that uh, once we move to our office December 1st. With, it's on the waterfront though so our DuPont location is, is around until December 1st and then we're at the new location. Updates on Unity Village and the proposed tiny home community. Homes Now has a number of other projects that we are working on. The first is Unity Village. Unity Village is our proposed site at Northwest Avenue where we are planning to build about 20 tiny homes 
and help those who have, who have some income but are homeless, such as veterans, so, uh, social security benefits, SSI, or low income people who are homeless. The main barrier at this point to Unity Village is that in order to get a power pole to the location, it would cost around $50,000 um, to pay Puget Sound Energy to put up the power pole. That pretty much blows the project out of budget for us um, for this particular location. We are ready to go forward with Unity Village as soon as we are able to secure the funds for that. If you know anybody that has $50,000 laying around, please let us know and we can move forward with Unity Village right away. Um, however, we have, stopped, we have not stopped looking for sites though. We are just going to be seeking alternative sites which might be more within the price range, with more within our price range, minus the very generous, uh, minus a very generous donor coming out of the woodwork from nowhere that wants to help us out. Most of the documentation that we've written for Unity Village is easily transferable to another site, minus the schematics and blueprints section of the documents, which lay out the site, which provide a layout for the site specifically. So everything besides the like layout of the site in our Unity Village documents is the same, uh, regardless of if we find two or three different sites. Updates on our uh, Winter Haven proposal. Holmes Now has also crafted a proposal for the city of Bellingham called Winter Haven. This would be a temporary tent encampment to help homeless individuals get through the winter. It would be in operation just through the winter if it goes through. Winter Haven would be drug and alcohol free. There would be a fence and check-in, check-out station for those leaving or entering the camp in accordance with the city and county ordinances around temporary encampments. Friday, October 12th, Jim and I met with the planning director, Rick Sepler, and the chief of police, David Dahl, to discuss the prospects for setting up Winter Haven on city land. In the absence of a site offered to us, we decided to propose a specific location. The site we proposed to the city was the parking lot of the baseball fields by Civic Field in the Puget neighborhood, about a block up from the street from where I live. This was the proposed site because those baseball fields are not used in the winter and there's a lot of parking and there are full bathrooms on site, minus the showers, but we have that covered with the shower truck. The city told us that we could apply for the site, or apply for a site, but that we shouldn't propose any specific sites and that they would look for a site but we shouldn't submit any specific sites, is what they said. We turned in a non-specific site application shortly after the meeting. Jim and I are meeting with the city again this Friday to discuss the proposal and to hear what the city has to offer in terms of barriers or progress. Homes Now has a handbook of policies for any temporary home, tiny home encampment or tent encampment. The handbook and all of the proposed plans are available on our website for those who might have questions or concerns. Thank you, Danielle Amari Benz, for helping to draft and update our documents for our handbook, for Unity Village, and for Winter Haven. They are extremely professional, easy to read, and continue to get better and better. Updates on the sleep out, happening December 1st. Another thing we are working on is there's going to be a sleep out at Maritime Heritage Park starting December 1st. In order to raise awareness about the homeless crisis in Bellingham and in Whatcom County that is not being addressed with enough urgency. The sleep out will be drug and alcohol free. We will have some basic fencing and a check-in check-out station in order to better keep track of who comes and who goes. In 2017, our sleep out lasted 18 days on the lawn of City Hall. We learned a lot. This time, the sleep out will be at Maritime Heritage Park. Last year, we had an outpouring of community support and it helped to raise awareness around the homelessness crisis in Bellingham and Whatcom County. We hope that this year, we'll be able to have an even greater impact on raising awareness. This is about the community being able to meet homeless individuals, <clears throat> learn about their various challenges, and to work toward solutions to help them. 
last year we were able to help house people indirectly, even just indirectly, by simply communicating, networking, listening, and getting them in touch with what they needed. Sometimes they don't even know what they needed, and you ask them, and they think about it, and then you help them. It's pretty simple. Amy Glasser helped to provide case management and helped people get to the hospital who needed it uh, at the last sleep out. There was a lot of uh, people who were homeless who had met various medical conditions, and uh, thank you, Amy, for that. Um, we were able to get a young woman back in touch with her parents as well. <clears throat> we were able to <clears throat> help a few others find their own housing, too. Many people don't realize that around 40% of the homeless population has a job or, or some form of income. With rents as sky high as they are and rising steeply, it's no wonder why we're seeing more and more people falling through the cracks, becoming homeless or living in their car or tents. It could happen to any of us. It's happening, this is a phenomenon happening all around the country. Some, some countries don't have a big problem with homelessness. The U.S. has a, an increasing problem with homelessness. We are meeting this Saturday to discuss our plans for the sleep out. We will have more updates on the sleep out as new information comes in <clears throat> after this weekend. Once again, thank you everybody for all your support and generous donations of time, energy, and money. <clears throat> Everything helps a little bit and it all adds up. We'll keep you posted.